Warning, this episode may contain content that is not suitable for children. Viewer discretion is advised. So tell me this, sexual harassment and sexual abuse, sexual abuse is in this, and at the bottom it says, gang rape is featured as a character being chained and choked. Pepe Le Pew is pushing rape culture, but we literally have gang rape and sexual abuse, and this is not canceled, tell me why. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining us at LED Live. We got to talk about this show because everybody has been sending it to us. I actually heard about this show about two years ago. Somebody sent it to me and said, you got to look at this. It's super satanic. And I'm like, okay, well, it's on YouTube. Anybody can make anything, a show about anything on YouTube. Um, and so I was like, it's blatantly satanic. Anybody should stay away from this, especially a Christian. Mm -hmm. There's pentagrams everywhere. Some things it just seems like we shouldn't have to cover it because it's yeah. like mm. it's right there in your face. It's satanic. There's nothing to really expose. But uh, when Amazon Prime picked this up and made it mainstream, that's yeah. when I was like, wait a minute, there's something different going on now because we have entered into an era where Satan doesn't even have to hide anymore. Mm. It used to be uh, these Gnostic stories or these satanic stories were sugar coated in some other kind of Disney story where you can't really tell it. You have to kind of peel it apart but over the years it's been like the frog in the kettle a little bit you know we'll, we'll see we'll push the limit a little bit more and oh they were okay with that well we'll keep going out and now you got anime called the seven deadly sins and they're the heroes and the ten commandments are the bad guys so that's where we're at and now amazon prime has picked up this show has been hotel and it's not some small thing in the corner anymore it was even when it was on youtube it had millions of people following it but mm -hmm. um, when you look at amazon prime's official youtube channel they are just displaying this thing everywhere and it's getting millions of views uh in less than a week so just looking at this picture do you guys see anything interesting in the picture when i first saw this i thought oh like that's a pretty like ornamental kind of design and then you <laughs> marvel without even looking at it because it's crazy i didn't know but then when you look at it there's three snakes actually it's like in a trinity format yeah. mm -hmm. there's also an apple in between the two of them mm -hmm. and then there are also hands Is that like hands yeah you see the hands dead, around like yeah. the antlers and stuff yeah i don't know that looks like like the head of a snake from an like upper level, and then the it, mouth looks like yeah. a dragon. Like yeah, here. actually, it looks like I a think. dragon too from the bottom. Oh. Yep, there's a compass back there too. Oh yeah, the what? Freemason compass is there. Oh, oh. right there. Yeah. yeah, it is. Oh wow! And so we've actually did a little bit of a, a reaction video to this. Brittany has not. She has no idea what this is. So I'm interested None. to hear her take on it. We've all kind of seen some of it, but not some of these other things. So what is Hasman Hotel? Um, we're gonna let the news tell us because this really shocked me. I didn't realize that. We're at a time where mainstream media news is supposed to be telling you what's going on in the world is actually saying, hey, go check out this new show called Hasman Hotel. Let's just watch this. This place is about second chances to convince heaven the people of hell can be redeemed. Hi, mister. Go yourself. Have you ever wanted something that was so clear in your mind that you could taste it? <laughs> You're going to help sinners? <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> so if our next guest only knew how much one of the producers here loves her show, for months now, we have been casually reporting on the animated series Has Been Hotel to the point if an actor signed on, we reported it. If a musical number dropped, we reported it. It became a running joke around here, and lo and behold, the joke was on us because when Has Been Hotel dropped on Prime Video, it became the top 10 most viewed in the world. Wow. Is the success a surprise? It, it is every single time. Like when I made the original pilot, that was a surprise. Like it had a, an audience, like I had been building, you know, just being online, but it exploded and I was like, whoa. And so the series has kind of been the same thing. I was like, oh boy, there's a lot of anticipation and there's a lot of excitement and I hope it lives up to it. And so the, the fact that people are liking it, I'm like, yay, it happened again. <laughs> when you, when you talk about this pilot though, this was something you originally put online, but it had millions upon millions of views. 
Yes, I think it's currently at like 93, which is I'm like, oh my God, like 90, 93 million. I'm like, wow, it's insane. <laughs> I have no idea how that happened. So I would imagine that worked as the, as like the hook for getting this on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We figured we'd bring out Andrea just to say hi. <laughs> maybe maybe she's got a couple things on her mind. <laughs> Anything you want to say now that you, <laughs> your idol is here? Face to face. Go for it, Andrea. I just want to say, Vivian, you are a source of the inspiration for me. And ever since I first saw Hasman Hotel, it has really meant so much in my life. And I have to say, this is probably one of my most favorite shows ever, hands down, which is a lot to say because I love to attack on Titan. I love Black Butler. <laughs> but Hasman on Hotel came right on top. Vivian, we thank you so much. Thank we, you. Thank oh you for, God. yeah, your, your success is unbelievable. What an inspirational story. So if you're interested in checking out Hasman in a Hotel, don't forget you can find it on Prime Video. Final two episodes of the season okay. will be released next thank Thursday you. for the U.S. If you don't have Prime Video, you can find the first full episode for free on Prime Video's YouTube page. We'll be right back. I just never dreamed oh, wow. a show like this. When you actually realize how bad it is, how explicit it is, and for mainstream media news to be like, check it out. We're going to interview the, the creator. But it is number 10 it, it, right now. It's in okay. the top 10. Top 10 yeah. of all things, not of animation, not of shows about hell of everything watched it's in the top 10 mm. that's pretty uh, that's pretty telling of where we're at in society <clears throat> is this marketed to children it is or is it just general like kids could just come across it and watch it it is a rated tv ma but we're gonna we're gonna look at who's the most like the biggest population yeah watching, watching it thing. okay okay so wh where do you find apples and snakes well, in definitely not in the Bible because it never <laughs> said it never said <laughs> it, never it was an apple. apple. Okay, but very, very that's good. theological just, story. Right, it just said it was a fruit, and I know I would not lose my salvation over an apple. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but isn't that crazy? Like, yeah. uh, you have to know that this is about the symbolism. Yeah, I yeah. mean, look, I when she came out, she was wearing these pants, and I was like, "Is that snakes?" And I, mm. I looked it up. Sure enough, she is wearing apples, and I did find the pants. Anyway, that's a snake. Uh, She's literally wearing snakes on her legs and apples up top. Wow. I don't think that this is just, you know, oh, this is cool and this trendy. Is not an accident. No, it, no. Look, it, it looks like a top that a teacher would wear. But the fact that she's wearing that was not an accident at all. She wow. knows exactly what she's doing. And so she's highly inspired by the Bible, but totally flipping the model, mm -hmm. as we're going to find out. Um, here's, here's a guy. He's just praising her he's interviewing her but just what he says at, at the beginning of this is just really interesting and kind of her response so check this out she's going to tell you a little bit about what the show is about vivian this show is absolutely incredible i love it i fell in love with it as soon as i saw that intro about lilith and, and lucifer it's incredible now uh this show started as a kickstarter in 2019 and it's going to be streaming on prime for those that aren't familiar with the hasbin hotel um can you describe the show yeah so so hasbin hotel is about um this it's, it's set in hell um it's about the the daughter of lucifer uh charlie morningstar who is um trying really hard to find a way to rehabilitate sinners in hell because there's an overpopulation problem and the way that heaven has dealt with that because they're worried that there might be an uprising is that they come down every year to basically exterminate as many as they can so charlie's like don't do that um please <laughs> those are my people and so she's trying to come up with a way to 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 redeem souls and and make you know hopefully get them to heaven that way and so she makes this hotel called the husband hotel which is named by alistair who's the character that comes in to help her as like a kind of Cheshire Cat. You're not really sure if he's good or evil, but she's got a lot of characters like that that kind of are either helping or, or hurting her her cause. And that's basically what the show is about. And it's a musical. Okay, so the setting I'm, is in I hell. Who's the redeemer? That, that Lucifer. The not Christ. The, yeah, the daughter of Lucifer. So Lucifer and Lilith fell in love, had the main protagonist, whose name is Charlie mm -hmm. Morningstar, and she's the redeemer. She's concerned that hell's population is getting really large. And so heaven every year comes down and exterminates everybody in hell because they're afraid. Heaven is afraid 
the hell is going to get, get so populated that they can Take have over. an uprising. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've seen that in other, um, other uh, anime and, and storylines where they think that God is afraid of us. Mm. Like the Matrix, he said, you're afraid of us. You're afraid. You know, when I tell everyone that there's no rules and all this stuff, um, there's always this story of God is afraid of humanity or afraid of demons being able to take over. But God doesn't have to fear anything. He created it all. He's the most powerful being in existence. I think Mm. it's also just the concept that it's possible for humans to do that when clearly it's not. (laughs) So... I mean, we see that with the Tower of Babel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just is not possible. But yeah, so, I'm baffled. <laughs> yeah, she's super sympathetic for humanity. And basically, it's painted in a way I've seen some of the, uh, there's a, a song. It's, it's, a, it's a musical. So it's really catching to, to people. But there's a song where Charlie is telling, she's up there in heaven and she's talking to an angel who looks just terrifying. He's got this evil grin and everything. And she's saying, look, hell's really overpopulated, but I want to make this hotel. It's a rehabilitation. And when they get good, then you can just take them to heaven instead of killing them every year. And the angel responds by saying, no, hell is forever. They've made their decision and tor- torment is our entertainment. Cause hell is forever, whether you like it or not. Have their chance to behave better. Now they boil in the pot. They're burning for their lives until we How's that painting God and his government? <laughs> He's a sadistic, tyrannical dictator, and that he gets off to seeing people be tormented all day. Yeah. I mean, this has so many, so many, so many problems. Right. Um, just the idea that God is, you know, so stupid when he judges humanity, he doesn't even know how to make the right decision. Mm-hmm. You know, he doesn't have the foresight to see like, oh, yeah, you know what? Actually, deep down in their heart, they really could have been good if they just had a little more time. Yeah. yeah. All that is wrapped up in that. Like God is not a just God. Exactly. That he doesn't know the difference essentially between what's right and what's wrong or that, you know, he doesn't know ultimately what people are like in their hearts. So, you know, he just made he made a bad decision. That's, yeah. mm-hmm. that's really essentially. And that he doesn't value souls because if you can just carelessly destroy Mm -hmm. them just every once a year it's just crazy i'm just so confused as and just disturbed by the woman on the news channel Mm. who said you know this show means so much to me like i'm really questioning where she is in life and Mm. what why is she dealing with issues where she feels like this gives her hope because maybe the church didn't or like, why is she connecting with this? It's the polarization Mm -hmm. of society. You know, the Christian right is the one. Well, Christianity in general is, is basically drawing the line in the sand and morality and saying, this is what God finds acceptable. We can find it here in the Bible. And this Mm -hmm. is what he doesn't. And the rest of the world's like, well, I'm in that group and I don't like that. Therefore, God, I don't like. Mm. And so they have to find a way. It's like everybody's trying to find a way to get around God and his rules and his law so that they can be in heaven too. Mm. Or do what they want. And do essentially do what they want and be in heaven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't want to surrender or obey. We just want We don't. We want what we want. And and essentially what it does is that you wind up breaking the first commandment because now God is not God. Mm. You're God. You're making the decision. Even more sad than than the lady that came on and saying that you're an inspiration to me or whatever is she's not alone. Yeah. This is a this is number you know, of people. <laughs> top ten. Yeah. This is where this is what our society is craving and, and watching. Mm-hmm. And it's it's more than just the storyline is based on the daughter of Satan is redeeming humanity and God is the villain. It's the whole thing is just explicit through and through. Every other line is a cuss word. Um, there is the perversion to the max. We're going to see all that stuff. Here's the characters. So Charlie Morningstar, her last name's Morningstar because her 
father's name is Lucifer Morningstar. Mm-hmm. But what I what I find is interesting. I always hear people bring that up. Morningstar. Jesus is actually the morning star. If you look in the Bible, it does call Lucifer son of the morning, but there's just kind of a, a mm-hmm. misunderstanding there. That's not a big deal. But same last name that they used for the Lucifer series. Yeah, uh, on TV, he really? was called Lucifer Morning Star. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. so, interesting. Um, it, it says, you know, we lost so many souls. This is a quote. This is her pitch to to heaven. She said, "We lost so many souls, and it breaks my heart to see my people being slaughtered everywhere. No one is even given a chance. I can't stand idly by while the place I live is subjected to such violence. So I've been thinking, isn't there a more humane way to?" hinder overpopulation here in hell perhaps we can create an alternative way to change souls through redemption well i think yes so that's what this project aims to achieve ladies and gentlemen i'm opening the first of its kind a hotel of rehabilitating sinners but her idea was shot down and she says there these people haven't even given a chance how Hmm. about let's try a little redemption Hmm. Did God not give people a chance? Did God not send a right. redeemer? Right, exactly. That's yeah. where I was going to. They don't want that one. Not that way, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In no. any way but Jesus. Yeah. Wasn't no. wasn't that in Fight Club too? He's like, no more redemption, no, no redemption. Is that was part yeah. of it? Like, yeah. yeah, I think so. I think that was. So you see over and over and over the programming that's been pushed. And I, I, I think it's laughable when people say, don't, don't shove your beliefs down my throat. When they're talking about Christians. How much Christianity is shoved down your throat? The little tract in the bathroom, the one or two stations on TV and the radio, and mm-hmm. all day long, New Age, whether it's a candy bar commercial, mattress commercial, New Age, the occult, witchcraft, always shoved down your throat, and nobody complains about it. Mm-hmm. In well, fact, I think, they embrace it. Yeah, I think it's because New Age is sold in a way that just looks good and you also have to consider people's upbringing because usually the whole Christian thing it starts in childhood mm-hmm. and however your parents treated you and, and they claim to be Christian. And if there was abuse in that, that leaves a very bitter taste in people's mouths. And that naturally makes people rebel, which I still think is wrong because the Bible mm-hmm. also says, do not provoke your children. Like people love to quote like everything. To wrath. Yes. To wrath. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just like, there's so many things that go into it. And, you know, I read this, um, and actually, no, someone said this quote. I went to this like live talk and they said, the devil knows that if he can fight early, he doesn't have to fight hard later. Right. And so it's like, if you can get them when you're, when they're little, mm-hmm. they start to just move on with the lies on their own. And I was just like, whoa. So there's so many, like those seeds planted matters. And yeah. I think that's probably an attack that the enemy just kind of loves to, um, like just the Christian family. And just making it over, um, what's the word? I don't know, just not too strict, but just in a way that's not godly. It's not God's intention. It just becomes this very strict Mm rule-based, no freedom, no love type of thing. And then you just grow up resenting that. You're like, I don't want this. And then you see new age, it's like freedom and love and embrace yourself and you know and it's just that's what you're chasing is that connection that you no longer associate with christ right Mm -hmm. i was gonna say you hit it right on the head i think because freedom is what we're after then all of a sudden if Mm -hmm. we're not acceptable to the church or to our parents and this is all under the guy like a guise or a title of christ Mm -hmm. which is mistaken in that case then they go looking for freedom elsewhere Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Which, true freedom cr- comes from Christ. Exactly. And even his law is a law of liberty because yeah. when you love God and you love your neighbor, that's true freedom. You live in a world with no pain and no misery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't steal from your neighbor. Don't lie. Don't cheat. All these things are good moral things that most people believe in. But you have to agree on that. And mm-hmm. that's that's the thing is there's no, you know, someone can say, oh, well, stealing is wrong. But they can say, okay, but from who? Because Um, what, you know, like there's so many like different things now that people like to just like these loopholes they like to take and no, exactly. And so everyone has their own, you know, you've heard the phrase, my truth, my reality. Mm -hmm. There is no just reality. There's no just plain truth. And so I think, yeah. Which is exactly what this is teaching because there's another song. I didn't really put that part in there, but there's a part where 
uh, she's saying, the angel is saying there's, there's black and white, there's rules. And she's like, no, this, mm -hmm. if this person would have had time, they would have had a, a chance to be redeemed. Mm. Yeah. Because the rules are black and white. There's no use in trying to fight it. They're burning for their lives until we kill them again. The Bible says in Romans 8, it says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. And then in Romans 7, right before that, it says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but the, I am carnal, sold under sin. So that's really what the problem is, is mm. our human nature is at war with what God desires for us. Mm -hmm. you know, our sinful nature is at, at war with the nature he really desires for us. Mm. And so when we put ourselves first, there's always going to be a conflict. And yeah. you're never going to submit to those things that God is asking to you. That's why it says it's not subject to the law of God. Of course not. You're not subjecting yourself to it. Mm -hmm. You're saying, no, no, it's my way or the highway. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So some of the other characters, this is Lucifer Morningstar. This is her dad. And I just wanted to show um, that is, it is in fact her. He's holding an apple. <laughs> he is holding an apple. Yeah. <laughs> this is in fact the daughter of Satan and he likes caramel apples. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of this play on biblical themes um this is like her best friend or something what is his name alistair that's not uh, just some name just picked out of hat what do you guys think alistair, alistair crowley, crowley. <laughs> right okay everybody was unanimously yeah. believed and i don't just think we're reaching here because shows like supernatural had a guy named alistair and a guy named crowley so <laughs> shows that talk about spiritual concepts uh, they know that he is a blatant most occult you know he said he was the wickedest man alive mm -hmm. he was a pedophile like why would you glamorize somebody like that as being mm. the best friend it says here that he is uh the main protagonist somewhere it said on the on the show he's he's like best friends with charlie right. so why would you glamorize somebody who was a pedophile occultist you know where else it is crowley's the bad angel in good omens See, huh. so look at this. Like <laughs> they always glamorize Aleister Crowley and they, they know who he is. He's associated with hell. I mean, these people are from hell, uh, but you can see Lilith, Lucifer, all these things. And this was in the show Supernatural, which I don't mm -hmm. know anything about, but I was just showing that mainstream media shows, they pick up on this stuff and they use that. That dude's name is Aleister for a reason. Uh, she has this other friend whose name is Angel Dust. And he is an adult he has four star. Four legs, arms. Yeah, like a spider or something. Angel Dust is an adult, uh, adult film star in Hell, and one of the main protagonists. So now, you know, not only is it Lucifer's daughter is a protagonist, Alistair Crowley is a protagonist, but also a porn star. And Why a, are we glamorizing I, these things? And a drug reference. I'm gonna. <laughs> what? And a drug reference. Yeah, Angel Dust. I'm gonna point out that it says Anthony. Anthony. Anthony, more commonly known as Angel, Angel Dust. Dust. Yeah, that's so the is that a he she thing going on? Uh, well, it says gender is drag queen. Okay. All right, we do yeah. have. Oh, okay, male. okay. It's a sinner demon, but sexuality is gay. Gender yeah. is male. But gender is male. Mm. Yeah. There's also a huge play on the black and white contrast. Look at the eyes. So a gay male porn star, drag queen, sex worker. This is somebody that we're glamorizing and glorifying as a protagonist well look at the position of the second arms what do you mean pointed like up? isn't that in the baphomet statue yeah, where above, one's pointed up and one's pointed down it is oh kind of like that, yeah above, so below so I, I wanted to point out that you know charlie she's gay her lover is a female so the main protagonist is bisexual actually but she's a in a lesbian relationship right now her best friend's gay. So I was curious, like, okay, it's it's rated TV MA. It's not for kids. Whoa. But this was um, on Reddit in the official Has Been Hotel thing three years ago. So this just got picked up by Amazon Prime, but it's been out for a couple of years on YouTube. And so somebody was like, I'm curious about the demographic that watches Has Been Hotel. This is from the fans. This is, imagine a whole fan page asking, what are your ages? This 15 to 19 category doubles any other age group. 
15 to 19 are the highest That's crazy. population of people watching this disgusting, satanic, perverted, in every kind of way show. I'm still, yeah, I'm still Zero on to that. ten. <laughs> I'm oh, still like, in there. They got I'm still on the internet that, yeah. two of them. and voted. <laughs> they had to be at least between five to seven. Wow. Maybe. Or like five to ten. So Whoa. just for anybody that thinks, you know, well, this is protected. It's for adults only. It's not. Me and uh, Keith, when we opened up the Prime and was looking at these music videos and everything that were cussing every word, you, we weren't even signed in. <laughs> no. We weren't signed no, we in. Weren't there was no in. thing that said sign in because this is age appropriate or whatever. There's nothing preventing a, a kid from watching this stuff. You familiar with common sense media? Yeah. Yeah. So they're kind of a watchdog group, have a, a lot of ratings and stuff. So on here, the parents guide to has been a hotel says 17 plus the description says rampant sex, mm. profanity, violence in animation set in hell. And it's listed as a comedy. And wow. yeah, they have a whole section on what to talk to your kids about. Uh, in mm. here. Yeah, well, we're going to look at some of that too from Internet Movie Database, the parent's guide. I only clicked on sex and nudity, not drugs or anything else. Violence and gore. I mean, there's a... there's Many. This show has everything, but mm -hmm. I only looked at the sex and nudity, and it says there's a building called Porn Studios. There are multiple blatant sex jokes and innuendos. Sex and prostitution are mentioned and shown in various episodes. Sex is very frequently mentioned and joked about. Nudity and porn are frequently mentioned and shown on screen. However, no on-screen genitalia is shown. Sexual harassment and sexual abuse frequently occur. Mm -hmm. This is usually played for laughs but sometimes handle a serious matter. I want to know when is sexual abuse ever funny? Right. Not, when can you put, yeah. when can you portray sexual abuse in the, in the era of me too and make a joke out of it? And it's one of the biggest things watched on, on television. Yeah. How does this yeah. happen? Like it's, it's like the cancel culture only picks and chooses mm -hmm. what they want to cancel. cancel yeah. Like mm -hmm. if it's Pepe Le Pew. All right, Sherry, the courtship is over. Mm -hmm. Getting there is Cancel culture fun. now coming for the Looney Tunes characters. The French skunk Pepe Le Pew has reportedly been cut from the upcoming Space Jam sequel after a New York Times columnist claimed the character perpetuates rape culture. That New York Times op-ed not only called to cancel Le Pew, but also his fellow Looney Tune character Speedy Gonzalez, accused of being a, quote, corrosive Mexican stereotype. Okay, so Pepe Le Pew... A Looney Tunes cartoon can be canceled because he's going after this cat and, you know, oh, me shuddy and all this stuff as a rape. <laughs> but when you blatantly have sex abuse as a joke and BDSM, sex toys frequently referred to and shown. Not just that. I feel like what would prepare you for this? is watching stuff like Family Guy <laughs> yeah. and these other shows. And I remember, um, was it uh, Cartoon Network way back? And I don't know if they still have it. They had like this one section after all the kids programming was done. Adult probably, Swim. Uh, yeah, Adult Swim. I feel like that's what prepares you for this. Like no one just wakes up in the morning and says, oh, I actually really like this show. Like there had yeah. to be some type of progression to yep. get here. Here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some yeah, programming there. there. Yeah. Gang rape. And I, and gang rape. You, so you know what's what's crazy? I actually looked up the demographics of this. Um and on similarweb.com. And it says that actually a majority of the gender distribution is male. Mm. Hmm. Um, it's 61.9% male and 38.2% women. Interesting because the creator is a woman. But I'm thinking if it's heavily sexual in this way, then you have to also think about um, maybe like anime porn or porn yeah. in general, how that like the like men dominate that demographic. Mm -hmm. right. um, and so it's like it would make sense because if you're not taking women seriously, you don't respect them, then you can see something like this. And it's like, oh, it's a cartoon. It's funny. It has cartoons and it's like, you know, they make them cute and whatever. So it's like, I don't know. It, kind of makes sense doesn't make it right but i mean that's disturbing some mm -hmm. occasional references to bestiality or furry sex but yet a cross or a manger scene is offensive 
in mm. our culture today. So tell me this, sexual harassment and sexual abuse, sexual abuse is in this. And at the bottom, it says gang rape is featured as a character being chained and choked. Pepe Le Pew is pushing rape culture, but we literally have gang rape and sexual abuse. And this is not canceled. Tell me why. And if there's a such thing as hate speech, is this cartoon not hate speech against Christianity? It literally is. And yet it's being viewed by millions and it's promoted by Amazon Prime. So here's a, a clip just to show you how Gnostic this is. This is an angel apparently in heaven. And this is a song and you're going to see how they paint God or the rulers of heaven and how their government is unfair. But she was right, Sarah. She showed us the soul can improve. He saw the light, Sarah. Checked all the boxes that you said would prove a person deserves a second chance. Now we turn our backs, no second glance. It's not as simple as you think. Not everything is spelled in ink. It's not fair, Sarah. Then heaven must be a lie Emily. If angels can do whatever And remain in the sky The rules are shades of gray When you don't do as you say When you make the wretched suffer Just to kill them again I was told not to trust in angels Wow So did you hear the rules are shades of gray? When you don't even keep them is what she's saying. If, if, if angels are allowed to sin and stay in the sky, then there must be shades of gray in here. Yet mm. you're not, basically you're not practicing what you're preaching. Well, what she finds out here is that her lesbian girlfriend is actually an angel who's been hiding it all this time. So there's a lot of angels that are finding out the truth about God and they're turning yeah. their back on God wow. and, and telling, you know, the world exposing God for being uh, unrighteous. I have... I don't know if you guys saw it, but while she's singing, all of a sudden this big all seeing eye, eye flashes uh, on her chest as though uh, she's been yeah. given the third eye oh, of enlightenment. Wow. enlightenment. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, and that's what they say when they're enlightened, is I am God, I can do what I want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it goes back to all of a sudden being a cute little, I don't know, bow or something or wow. star on her. You mm. caught that, that I went did. right yeah. into my subconscious. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> Wow. I think too, um, it's interesting because I think the reason why this can be so encouraging to some people is because, okay, for people to be encouraged by this, there had to be a narrative mm -hmm. set up. And it seems like the narrative is you can't do it. Like you're never going to be good enough for God and you're just going to end up in hell anyway, because you're never going to be what he wants you to be. And that's, God knows that he says all has fallen, all have fallen short of the mm -hmm. glory of God. And so it's just like, it's, it's not about what you're doing. It's who you're surrendering to. Like, you know, the fruit will come from that relationship you have with Christ. That's the key though. I think that you miss is the other part of the story is the whole surrender part. I'm the one that should be surrendering to God, not demanding that God change because of my choices. Mm, correct. Right. But that's the thing. Surrendering is simple. It's not about making sure you feed every homeless person. Mm -hmm. It's not about making sure that you never say a cuss word in your life. And if you do, then you're going to hell. It's right. not action based. It's when you surrender to Christ, the fruit will come from that. But surrendering is hard in a way in terms of like it is conflicting with the carnal nature. Mm -hmm. right. So that's well, the hard part about it. Charlie or the, the angel that was singing in the beginning said this person did check off all the boxes that you said were needed or whatever. Mm. And yet you still mm. didn't let them because they're already in hell for one. That's true. This mm. is for somebody who's already died. They're already in hell. And now they're 
now that they're in hell, now they're going to check all the boxes and try to get to heaven. Well, it's too late, you know, hmm. but they're saying that that's unfair. You should let these people be redeemed, which well, uh, by, yeah. you know, you would obviously have to result to, well, Satan needs a chance to, right. Mm-hmm. This is sympathy for the devil. You know, how come Satan can't have a chance to go to heaven? As right. if checking off all the boxes is the way it all happens. Right. Well, it's, then yeah. it's very works based. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Works based or legalistic, whatever they've heard, either from their upbringing or church or bad friendship, whatever it was that they came across Christians or that narrative of Christians believing that it's all about just checking boxes, then they all got turned against it and, yeah, went for this instead. Mm-hmm. Like it speaks to their heart because they're bitter about what they've experienced. Yeah. And I think what's crazy too is watching this, you already get the sense of like, I'm already doomed yeah. when that's a lie. Yeah. Satan is the only one who has the secure fate in this whole thing. Right. He mm-hmm. is going to hell. Mm-hmm. And just- every other person, they still have the choice to yep. get out in reality, yeah. not in the show, but in reality. Yeah. Right. It doesn't matter what, like where you are in life, there is still a possibility for you to come to Christ if you make that decision. Right. Right. Lucifer is not redeeming anyone. He's trying to drag people to yeah. hell with him. As long as so, there's breath in your lungs. And exactly. the thief on the cross is a prime example of that. Right. We have an example of somebody who was dying because of something. They were being put to death because of something right. they did was wrong. They were guilty. Right. All the mm-hmm. way to the point of death. And he still surrendered to Christ. Right. said, I recognize you're the son of God. You're the only way right. I'm going to get to go. Right. Please remember me in your kingdom. And Christ said, you'll see me in the, in the right. kingdom. And Jesus right. didn't say, oh, well, you didn't Too check late, off buddy. the boxes. Yeah. Mm, you didn't. Yeah. You spent your whole life sinning. He said, you will be with me in paradise. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I know the one eye symbolism everywhere. Yeah. So this is the, the two minute intro that kind of is very uh, Gnostic and some of us are already seen this, but I'll go ahead and show this for if this is your first time ever seeing this be talked about this is the setup of the whole the plot of the whole show once upon a time there was a glowing city protected by golden gates known as heaven it was ruled by beings of pure light angels that worshipped good and shielded all from evil lucifer was one of these angels he was a dreamer with fantastical ideas for all of creation but he was seen as a troublemaker by the elders of heaven for they felt his way of thinking was dangerous to the order of their world. So he watched as the angels began to expand the universe in their ways. From the dust of earth they created Adam and Lilith, equals as the first of mankind. But despite this, Adam demanded control and Lilith refused to submit to his will. She fled the garden. Drawn in by her fierce independence, Lucifer found her and the two rebellious dreamers fell deeply in love. Together, they wished to share the magic of free will with humanity, offering the fruit of knowledge to Adam's new bride, Eve, who gladly accepted. But this gift came with a curse, for with this single act of disobedience, evil finally found its way into Earth. With it, a new realm of darkness and sin and the order heaven had worked to maintain was shattered. As punishment for their reckless act, heaven cast Lucifer and his love into the dark pit he had created, never allowing him to see the good that came from humanity, only the cruel and the wicked. Ashamed, Lucifer lost his will to dream, but Lilith thrived, empowering demonkind with her voice and her songs, and as the numbers of hell grew, so did its power. Threatened by this, heaven made a truly heartless decision that every year they would send down an army, an extermination, to ensure hell and its sinners could never rise against them. But Lilith's hope remained, and her dream was passed down to their precious daughter, the princess of hell. Don't worry, mom. I'll make you proud. I feel like I just want, I just like saw an animation of what's in the satanic Bible. Exactly. Even though I've never read it, I feel like I literally now know what's in the satanic Satanic Bible. Sunday school. This is the story, guys, (laughs) of how Lucifer was kicked out, but he's going to save the universe. But when they were showing Lucifer and Lilith falling in love, it was a gray screen with the, the tree in between. There was a serpent 
coming down out of it. And two, it almost appeared that two women were standing there. Yeah, I saw that. Suddenly with hair okay. in the yeah. wind. And, and then, then, yeah, there's right two, there, women, two women all like, of a sudden. Yeah. Is it Lilith and Eve? Yeah, because that's oh. he's about to give Eve yeah, the oh, love okay. with Lilith. Yeah. Gotcha. And now the serpent actually oh, turns not in. Not me knowing the, the, sat- the satanic yeah. Bible story. And he gives her the gift of free will. We didn't oh. mention that, but it's God oh, that yeah. gives free will. Right. But in this yeah, yeah. story, it's Satan that's offering the gift of free will. Mm-hmm. Wow. He just gave her the option to, I mean, he just gave her the, or presented her the opportunity to choose She already had free bad. will. Bad. Yeah, right. she already had free will, but he just presented the bad opportunity to her. Like, hey, now that you have the choice, you should actually pick it. Right. right. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, he didn't offer her anything she didn't have already. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah, well, he did offer her. That's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's actually true. This is in the top 10 of everything watched in the world. I'm not surprised. If somebody had the budget to make an amazing animation like this, and it was based on how there's a loving father in the sky, and he wants to, he's saving people, he's protecting humanity from demons because he's going to create a perfect world for them to live in where they can live forever in a perfect world, no pain and no sorrow. Would it be picked up by Amazon Prime? Watched by millions upon millions of people? No. I think it might be picked by Amazon Prime, but it will not be promoted. You think they, 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 do, they do have Bible stuff on there, like Bible stories, okay. but they're not from, like you'd have to just, I mean, every, every streaming site does. Like mm-hmm. they'll have your... Messiah or not Messiah, but the that's the, not a good show. That is not a good show. <laughs> um, I meant the one um, the Young Bible. Messiah. I think that's the one um, when he was little. A lot of creative interpretation there, but yeah, they have Esther the Bible story series. So, I, but I don't think it would be promoted. Right, and it, you know, it's it's true that the the way to destruction is broad. You know, mm-hmm. millions of people are watching this. But just a few people find that narrow gate to life mm-hmm. that, that yeah. is, only comes through Christ. You can't get to God by any other way. He's the way. Jesus is the way, not a way. There's not many ways to God. There's one. And millions of people are thinking that this is something that they want to watch. Mm-hmm. I think what's crazy is we have to unlearn mm-hmm. what beauty isn't. Because, I mean, God is the author of beauty, and he's a creative God, but it's like when you see stuff like this all the time growing up, you have to unlearn that. Like mm-hmm. we, in our natural state, do not find God attractive. Mm-hmm. Like that's something that has to come with time. Um, you know, because I know for me, like before, I remember before when I started first watching this channel, I mean, there are a lot of things I just didn't see. Like I, it was just what I was used to. And I had to learn over time. Now I'm to the point where I'm just like, whoa, like I can't believe at one point I just mm-hmm. used to think nothing of this and I would just consume it. But yeah. American Horror Story was her favorite show. Okay. You don't have to call me out. Hey, you, you <laughs> admit it. I mean, I, I used to consume metal music and <laughs> horror movies all the time. Yeah. But I would already turn. I, didn't, I wasn't even trying to find out at that point. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this is, I mean, it's, it's pretty shocking, you know, that this is mainstream now. And I think if you showed this trailer to somebody in the 30s, they might have a heart attack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, in the 1930s? <laughs> yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, what if you, I mean, I just can't imagine somebody from the past traveling to the future and they turn on the TV and this is what they see. Yeah. They'd just be like. That would be like sensory overload and they probably mm-hmm. wouldn't know what's going on. Like, like I've died and gone to hell. Like, yeah. yeah. Or like, why is God a woman? And why? There's so many things. Ariana Grande made a music video. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he said, there's so many things to break down in there. We actually have a video uh, just breaking down this trailer alone. If you guys want to watch that, it's going to be at the end. You can click that. The link will be in the description. But uh, in this, we broke down a lot of stuff about who these characters represent, who's watching this stuff, how if you promote sexual violence in the right way, maybe it's acceptable. But if you're Pepe Le Pew, you get canceled. I don't understand how that works. But these are making me think of some scriptures in the Bible. Isaiah 520 says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. That's exactly what this show is doing. Mm -hmm. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. This is a a description of the last days. If you can't see that, that's what the majority of 
mainstream media and pop culture is promoting, then you're just blinded by the enemy because that's what is happening. And we are living in the last days, no doubt. Makes me think of Revelation 12, 9, when it says the great dragon, which was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Satan's here. His demons are here and he's deceiving the entire world to the point to where we're being entertained by his gospel, his side of the story that says God is a tyrannical villain and Lucifer is actually our redeemer. You know, I, I had learned something recently. Um, I'm reading a commentary on the book of Revelation. And so you go through there, the author is breaking down a lot of different things in, in Greek because um, that's what it was written in. And when you read the word 660 and 6 in Greek, mm -hmm. it's very fascinating when you look at root words that they all begin with something you would recognize. Really? Yeah, because um, hex, meaning 6, mm -hmm. right? Right. Is the root is is the the prefix to all of the all of the words or you know in in, in the Greek? What is a hex? Like a spell, a curse, yeah, a, curse oh. a spell, or a curse, and it's mentioned you know three times. Wow. Um, of course, it, in in it's talking about the number, but then that number has been also reassociated, if you will, in the modern vernacular to mean. Uh, you know, bewitching or a curse or a spell that you put on people. Mm -hmm. And of course, obviously coming from that, yeah. you know, because this, this is where it all goes back to. There's mm -hmm. actually on this show, there's a news channel called 666 News. Like they just embrace everything satanic and was heck, uh, pentagrams and everything. It's, it's just crazy. But we are definitely living in these last days. Revelation 13, 4 says... And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like him? Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? I'm like, I used to see this as a kid. And I was like, how could the world, in the 90s. And I'm like, how could the world ever worship Satan? <laughs> yeah, that sucks. <laughs> well, and that, that last sentence here is, is exactly the mentality that you're, you're watching. It's like, hell is such a force to be reckoned with you know who mm. can make war with hell i mean wow. you know god's afraid they get a, they get yeah. uprise and take it over so he's yeah. got to nip it in the bud quick yeah. mm -hmm. and so what what used to seem like a inconceivable thing is now like we're there mm -hmm. <laughs> we're unveiling yeah. baphomet statues we're entertaining ourselves by shows that glamorize perversion and satanism mm -hmm. What's crazy, though, is like you asked the question, how would people ever worship Satan? I mean, look at how even though the characters around him are evil and they're doing weird stuff, he portrays himself like Christ in a way, yeah, like the redeemer. the redeemer. You know, like you should feel sorry for him because yeah. he just really wanted to do good he's in the world. Dreamer. And he's mm -hmm. a dreamer mm -hmm. and he's a rebel in the most beautiful way. And yeah. that's what the Bible also says. He, it'll, he'll appear like an angel of light. Yeah. And so that's how people can worship him because they're deceived. Yeah. That's the scary part is he doesn't like... Satan doesn't care whether you know you're worshiping him or not. Mm -hmm. yep. It's just as long as right. you're not looking at God and you don't know who right. he really is, he's like, that's a side. Even though yep. we may think a middle ground exists, it doesn't. Oh, no, yep. he's either got you. Or exactly. Yeah. So he's like, if I, if you're just there, then okay. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's why it's important that you have relationship. This is where it breaks down in Eden. It breaks down at the relational level. We mm. know God by his characteristics, mm -hmm. right? You're going to also understand what's not God by its characteristics. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not, it's, it's the appearance is easy. Just like you said, it's easy to change, right? right? We can change the facade, flip that in and out. Um, Satan does that to suit his liking, but the characteristics, mm -hmm. those never change. Mm, right. right. Yeah. That's, that's how propaganda works. You know, like, People look at Thanos and they're like, oh, he couldn't be like Jesus. Look, he's mean and purple. Well, that's just, that's like spray painting a square mustache on somebody, you know? It, everything that Thanos represents is Christ-like. 
He's sitting on a throne in a spaceship called the Sanctuary in the heavens, and he's coming to Earth to snap his fingers and destroy half of humanity or separate the sheep from the goats. That's Christ. But the propaganda part is, oh, he's a big, scary, purple alien guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's happening here as well. They could portray the, the angels in heaven as these menacing grins and they're destroying people. But, you know, the Lucifer, he's all like, oh, a dreamer that's creative. So many little things. You notice the angels uh, that, that went to create, like, exclusively from Lucifer, you know, keep him out. Yeah. Mm. There were four of them. Mm -hmm. which makes me think of the four living creatures. Oh, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. And when it was talking about God in the beginning, it had all these eyes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which is also symbolic in Revelation. Yeah, the lamb, the lamb with seven eyes, right? I, I bet that is the four living creatures because mm -hmm. I, they, they were really, all a little different. Yeah, they made them all like these biblically accurate, um, <clears throat> strange creatures and things. I thought the way they portrayed the angels in this show was very interesting too. Because there's more like AI images of what angels really look like right. going about. So it's no longer these human-like beings. It's like the weird... Wheel within a wheel. Wheel eyes within a wheel. Them. Eyes, yeah, with wings. Scary stuff that if it said, do not fear, I'd definitely yeah, would be yeah. afraid. <laughs> but God is so cool in his creation. You look at spiders and snakes and things that are underwater. Yeah. I don't doubt that he has some yeah. interesting looking creations up, up in heaven, you know? Yeah. Uh, this is the last verse I have, Revelation 16, 14, because this is really what is happening. Satan is preparing the world to fight Christ. We know Jesus is coming soon. Like we look at all the signs around us, Jesus is coming soon, and Satan has something that he's going to do. And it says, For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Satan is forming an army to fight against the coming of Christ. Now, it's uh, it's a pathetic attempt. We Nobody, if we had the whole world, can fight Christ and win. But if Satan can deceive people into thinking that Christ is some evil alien invader that needs to be fought against and we can only you know, fight him if we join sides with him or whatever, then we're giving our allegiance to Satan. Yeah. We're joining his army in, in, against, in an attack against Christ in an in a attack that's really going to be our demise. So the historical background here, and, and likely probably what John had in, in mind when he wrote it, um, this battle, Armageddon, uh, comes from a um, Hebrew term, Har Megiddo, which is, is like the Valley of Megiddo. Mm -hmm. um, the the mountain that's near there it doesn't say it here but it, there's another text in 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 revelation that alludes to this is mount carmel mm. and what happened on mount carmel it's this this essentially spiritual battle that happens between elijah and the prophets oh, of baal yeah. mm -hmm. right yeah. and the whole determination in this whole thing is about who is god mm -hmm. right and these prophets of Baal, they go forth like these spirits of the devil. And what are they trying to do? They're trying. They hope for a miracle, yeah. right? They wish they had a miracle because mm -hmm. they would have lit that mm -hmm. altar up <laughs> in a second if yeah. they could. And of course, in a in a in a more spiritual sense, at the end of time, Satan is able to succeed in that way. God allows him to, you know, work deceptions. Um, all for the purpose of gathering, you know, gathering. Satan wants to gather everybody to his side, but that's that's probably the historical link that John had in mind when he wrote this. Do you think that, that Satan is going to try to fight Christ when he comes? Like a physical battle? Yeah. I don't. I don't think that's. <laughs> I don't think. I mean, I, well, it does say that you think they, of the ridiculousness. Like, it is how do you fight? But it does say that physically, um, God that. The wicked will rise up on the breadth of the earth, encompass the city of the saints, and try to take it over by force. And sure, like try. That. So, but what yeah. what does that look right, like? What does right, that mean? Yeah. And what and and what is God going to do? I mean, Bring all he has to do is heaven. like say. And done. that's what yeah. leads You're me done. to think: like, does Lucifer or does Satan actually believe? Like, does he know he's lying, or does he just believe that he actually can do this? You know, the worst like, kind of deception. 
Self-deception. Self-deception. So you think he doesn't, he really is just delusional. Yes. Yeah. At this point. He's what we call today Delulu. <laughs> I haven't heard that for sure. Even like <laughs> psychopaths and others, narcissists and such get to a certain point where they believe their own lie. Yeah. They it's don't like, know themselves anymore. That is crazy and, and if you're gonna go around promoting a lie all the time mm -hmm. you just about to have to be at the point where you do believe it yeah, yeah. otherwise how do you convince everybody else mm -hmm. yeah. so how does he like that's just crazy because for you to have a show where you're like you know even with lucifer the tv show it was still like Oh, like, woe to me. Like, God kicked me yeah. out of heaven. I just really wanted to, like, do really good things for people. That means he doesn't even know he's lying. Mm -hmm. Like, he just... He's self-consumed. That's, it's that's nature. It's crazy. His nature. Yeah. The number one, the first sin was pride. But, yeah. Well, if you guys think we're living in the last days, give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> I sure believe we are. If you know somebody that might be interested in something like this, or a parent that has kids that might be interested in this, please share this with them because awareness is uh, part of the first step, you know, and we want to expose Satan's deceptions. If you've never seen this channel, click subscribe, click the bell. We'll, uh, it'll update you on videos that come out. We have a show like this every Friday. We also have little smaller videos that come out throughout the week. If you want to support this channel, you can do so by going to littlelightstudios.tv. There's a donate button there. Yep. And you want to wear a t-shirt, we got a lot of cool shirts on lightwear.shop where you can really wear your witness. These are uh, opportunities to be able to break the ice and share. Um, not that shirt though. This one is not. <laughs> this is a friend of mine's ministry. But yeah, if you want to wear your witness, it's a great icebreaker to talk about spiritual things and biblical things. And if you have little ones and you don't want them exposed to trash like this, then go subscribe to Little Light Kids, where we're producing um, content that's safe and suitable and most of all, biblically sound for kids. And we'll see you next Friday. Thanks for tuning in, guys. questions about the Bible that you've been struggling to find the answers for? Video Bible Study, or VBS for short, is a YouTube channel that answers your Bible questions in five minutes or less. Check out these easy to understand, comprehensive videos talking about everything from what happens when you die to why does God allow suffering. Make it your goal to deepen your relationship with Christ this year and subscribe to Video Bible Study on YouTube to help you along your journey.